ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣನಾಮೃತವಾರ್ಷಿವಕ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣನಾಮೃತವಾರ್ಷಿವಕ್ತ ಚಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರಭಾತ್ವಷ್ಟತಮೋಭರಾಯ ಚಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರಭಾತ್ವಷ್ಟತಮೋ ಭರಾಯ ಗೌರಾಂಗದೇವಾನುಚಾರ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಗೌರಾಂಗದೇವಾನುಚಾರ್ಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀಲ ನರೋತ್ತಮಯ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀಲ ನರೋತ್ತಮಯ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಶ್ರೀಲ ನರೋತ್ತಮಯ Hare Krishna to all the devotees of ISKCON Montreal. Thank you so much for inviting me to your Sangha. So while you all set it up for the Facebook, I'll just do a short Kirtan and then we'll dive into the class. So we'll do the daily Kirtan that we do. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karo Mure Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karo Mure Tum Vina Ke Daya Lu ಜಗತ ಸಂಸಾರೆ ತುಮ ವಿನಾಕೇದಯಾಲು ಜಗತ ಸಂಸಾರೆ ಪತಿತ ಪಾವನ ಹೇತು ತವಯವತ ಪತಿತ ಪಾವನ ಹೇತು ತವಯವತ ಮುಸಮ ಪತಿತ ಪ್ರಭು ನ ಪಾಯಿ ಪಯಾ ಆ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದ ಸುಖಿ ಹಾ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದ ಸುಖಿ ಕೃಪಾ ಬೋಲೋ ಕಾನ ಕರೋ ಅಮಿ ಬಡೋ ದುಃಖಿ ಕೃಪಾ ಬೋಲೋ ಕಾನ ಕರೋಮಿ ಬಡೋ ದುಃಖಿ ದಯ ಕರೋ ಸೀತಾಪತಿ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗೋಸಾಯ ದಯ ಕರೋ ಸೀತಾಪತಿ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗೋಸಾಯ ತವ ಕೃಪಾ ಬೋಲೆ ಪಾಯ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಿತ ಹಾ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಸನಾತನ ರೂಪ ರಘುನ ಭಟ್ಟ ಜುಗ ಶ್ರೀಜೀವ ಪ್ರಭು ಲೋಕನ್ನ ದಯ ಕರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಸಂಗ ಮಗೇನರೋತ ಮದ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರ ಸಂಗ ಮಗೇನರೋತ ಮದ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ದಯ ಕರೋ ಮೊರೆ ದಯ ಕರೋ ಮೊರೆ 
All glories, all glories to Narutan Das Thakur. Shil Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are we okay? Thank you so much, sir. My, my humble, humble obeisances to all the devotees at Montreal. Please accept my pranams. Vancha kalpataru bhayas chakripa sindhu veva chapatita nam pavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namo namaha ananta koti vaishnavrindh ki chai shrila prabhupada ki chai apne apne gurudev ki chai. So, I have been asked to speak today on the glorious life and teachings of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. I think today also happens to be the uh, appearance day of Srila Narottam Das Thakur. So it's a privilege. Uh, personally, Narottam Das Thakur is my favorite, favorite hero among all the uh, Gaudiya uh, lineage that we have of different Acharyas. He's uh, personally, um, I'm very, very inspired and um, I'm very uh, glad to be given this opportunity today to speak something to glorify him. <clears throat> Narutan Das uh, Thakur <clears throat> was not only a um, was not only a firebrand preacher or a fearless preacher, but he was also a very very Rasika devotee, and he has written several several songs. I think more than. 120 songs or something, but um, hundreds of songs, hundreds of verses and um, few books. So we are very, very fortunate today to get this opportunity to glorify him because um, knowingly or unknowingly, actually we are connected to him on a day-to-day -day basis because we sing these songs which were written by him in, as our daily sadhana. We, we are singing Shri Guru Charana Padma and then there are Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Karamore or just about so many such songs which we sing as a part of our daily sadhana are written by Narutam Das Thakur. And not only that, our dear Srila Prabhupada at several places, I think um, uh, somebody even made a research on this more than 2,000 times Narottam Das Thakur has been quoted by Srila Prabhupada, whether it is his lectures or conversations or books or room conversations. You know, we, if you just go to the Veda base or just, you know, you can see several places Prabhupada is saying, so Srila Narottam Das Thakur said, Srila Narottam Das Thakur said this, though he didn't speak much about his life, but definitely Prabhupada quoted from the purports and translations of his various bhajans. So the essence of our bhakti life is to get mercy of Krishna, is to drive attention of Krishna on us so that we can be delivered. And the only way to get this mercy is through the acharyas. So we need to get connected to these acharyas. We need to get attached to these acharyas. And it's only then that we can get their mercy. Now, how do you get attached to somebody if we don't know much about him. So the more we know, the more we hear about them, our attachment towards them grows. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur says that this attachment to the Acharyas is the very root, it's the very root for the tender creeper of our Bhakti. So the more we hear, the more we can relate to them, the more we understand that they are not some distant historical figure. They're very much there, they're very much present, they're very much, their, their shelter, their inspiration is very much there in our, in our lives. So the more we hear about them, the more we get connected. So today, in my talk, I'll be drawing in bits and pieces from different places from uh, something from Bhakti Ratnakar by Narahari Chakravati Thakur, something from uh, Narottam Vilas, which is also by the same author, Narahari Chakravati Thakur, some things from the Prema Vilas, which is by Nityananda Das, and some things from the book uh, Vaishnav Saints by Satyaraj Das, and, and many things from the uh, book by Sitala, Sitala Mataji, The Glorious Life of Narottam Das uh, Thakur, one, one amazing book on the pastimes of uh, Narottam Das Thakur. But all these different books has overlapping facts in the sense um, there's a lot of difference of opinions about different events that happened. But today, our focus is not on the chronologies, but it's on the 
it's on the philosophical and the emotional content of that and how we take inspiration and lessons from those pastimes is what our focus will be. So we will um, try to take some lessons from the uh, pastimes of Narottam Das Thakur. So we all know that um, he's a trailblazer of you know the preaching movement of uh, Krishna consciousness and how it all started, how it all started and how he appeared. So, coming to his birth, his birth was already awaited, awaited by the Supreme Lord himself. So there is this, there is this pastime where um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he was once uh, doing Kirtan with other associates on the uh, bank side, on the bank uh, river side of uh, river Padmavati. And uh, along with his associates, they were, you know, with their hands high in the air, chanting and doing kirtan. Now, as they come close to the river, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he just faints, you know, he just faints in ecstasy. And then, uh, after some time, when, when he is into consciousness, he starts uh, calling out, Narottam, Narottam. And then, um, uh, they are all just thinking among themselves, so who is Narottam? Who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu calling out to? So Nityananda Prabhu goes closer to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, my Lord, who is Narottam? Uh, uh, nobody when name Narottam is here. Whom should I call for? And he again says, Narottam, Narottam. And Nityananda Prabhu is wondering what's happening. And Vakreshwar Pandit and Haridas Thakur, they just start chanting more loudly. Maybe that will pacify Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then they see, lo and behold, Chaitanya Prabhu, Mahaprabhu starts crying and crying and tears are rolling down. And they're not able to understand what exactly happened. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is sharing with Nityananda and he says, who will carry on the mission after we are no more in this world? Who will carry on the mission? And Nityananda Prabhu very humbly says, you know the answers for all the questions, my Lord. How do I know? And then um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu whispers in his ears and says, Narottam will carry out the mission. Narottam will carry the mission further. So they're still wondering, but who is Narottam? And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, he's not born yet. He's going to come. And he calls out for Narottam. And then he announces that tomorrow morning, I'm going to take bath in this river, Padmavati, and I'm going to deposit Krishna Prem in this river for Narottam. So when Narottam takes birth, this uh, Krishna Prem will be handed over to Narottam. So now they're all wondering, how is this going to happen? So however, the devotees are very excited. So next day morning, every, everybody is ready and Kirtan is going on and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu goes inside the river and he's there up, up to his waist and then he just calls out and Padmavati Devi, the river, she just comes and with folded hands and says, yes, my Lord, how can I serve you. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, well, I want to deposit Krishna Prem with you. Keep it safely. And when a dark complexioned boy called Narottam comes, hand over this Krishna Prem to, her, to him. Now, I, I don't know what way Lord gave Krishna Prem. Some places it is said that Lord gave a golden pot to her. Whereas in some commentaries they said, Lord was crying tears and that tears got mixed up in the river Padmavati and that is Krishna Prem. So now we don't know what is that mysterious thing that Lord handed over, but yes, Lord did hand over uh, Krishna Prem to Padmavati. Now the river Padmavati asks, oh, this is very nice, but how do I know who is Narottam? You just give a, you say dark complexion boy. So there's so many dark complexion boys. How will I know this is Narottam? So then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, just like when I entered your rivers, your banks were over flooding, your water was over flooding. Same thing will happen when Narottam enters your water. So do give him this Krishna Prem. And then Padmavati River um, just accepts it and goes. And then our uh, hero appears. So that is some time after uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, leaves this world, around 1534, maybe one year this way, that way, in this place called Keturi, this village, which is on the bank of uh, Padmavati uh, River, which is in the present day uh, Bangladesh. I think it's in Murshidabad district. So here, there is a Kaista. Now, Kaista is a particular class, a particular caste of people 
who were um, who were managing the villages, but they were under the Muslim kings. So, however, they were not respected by the Brahmanas because uh, they were uh, um, subservient to Muslims. So, these Muslim rulers, these Nawabs, were their boss. So now, but however, he was very affluent and very rich. So, this king called Krishna Nanda Datta and his wife uh, Narayani, uh, they were the uh, rulers for this place called Keturi. So, of course, this is, this is such a, a huge topic and there are so many sweet, sweet pastimes which happen in between of how um, <clears throat> they never had any children for a long time in their marriage and they were waiting and they were... A, pious couple worshipping Shaligram and, uh, you know, doing their religious duties properly, uh, ruling the, their whole, uh, you know, area very piously, very sweet, very humble couple. But they didn't have children for a long time. So now this mysterious things start happening to them. How one day Krishnananda is just sitting you know, and looking out of the window and he hears a celestial voice saying that, you know, very soon a male child is going to be born to you. And then uh, very next moment, his wife comes in and says, uh, you know, I saw a dream. And in a dream, I saw a very, very effulgent personality entering from your heart to my heart. And as they are talking, you know, they decide, okay, let's call for an astrologer. What is happening? Why are we seeing so many beautiful omens? So then they call out for an astrologer and then astrologer predicts, yes, very soon a male child is going to be born to you. And then uh, it happens in the month of uh, Magha, on a full moon night, uh, Narutam Das Thakur appears. Now when he appears, he's a dark complexion, but very beautiful looking with petal, lotus petal like eyes, a very, very effulgent body. So now the, he was the one and the only son and born after, after such a long marriage. So they were really attached to him and they really wanted to make it very grand. So they invite everybody, have great festival, and then they invite the different astrologers to see their chart, what our son is going to be and how do we name him? What name will be appropriate for him? So then they all calculate different stars and then they say, yeah, looks like he's, he's, he's one of the very, he's going to be one of the very greatest men who have walked the earth. So why not we call him Narottama? Because Nara means man and Uttama means one who is um, great personality or let's say one who is topmost, topmost. So Naro Uttama is one who is a topmost man. So that is how they call him Narottama. But however, the astrologers predict, but there's something with the river. Make sure that your son never enters a river body, a water body, because if he does that, then there is going to be some problem. He may become mad or, you know, whatever. So be careful that he never enters a water body. So then that's it. And uh, they were very happy. They made sure the child never goes to the water body. His father was always looking at the, you know, window and looking at the Padmavati river and thinking, I'll never allow my son to go, go near the water. Now the child's now, child's getting elder and you know the, after the six months they have this ceremony called Anna Prasanna so the first Anna the first grain of rice the child takes now this is also very special how it happened in Narutam Das Thakur's life so he's a small baby and now they're trying to feed him some sweet rice that's the ceremony they start with the sweet rice but he's so adamant otherwise he's a very sweet boy but he just doesn't open his mouth and he's not ready to take in and they're wondering what happened so the mother is trying and the father is trying but it's just not working out and then a brahmana comes and he had just finished his daily puja and he's just carrying some prasadam from his uh, deity. So he says, shall I try? And they said, yeah, why not? So he just takes that prasad and puts it in Narutam's uh, mouth and immediately Narutam takes it. So then they all understand, oh, this was not offered to the Lord. So Narutam did not want to eat it. He wanted to eat that which is offered to the Lord. And and and, and everybody starts glorifying, hey, Krishnananda, looks like your son is very devotionally inclined. And Krishnananda becomes very happy he said yes so my son is going to be a good king he's such a pious even from childhood he's showing such beautiful symptoms and then of course at the age of five they do the Karna Bheda ceremony. So the Karna Bheda ceremony is they pierce the ears and then the formal education starts. So now he's formally getting educated. But then he was Rajakumar. He was a prince. So they never had him go to a school, but they had a school inside the palace. So where different pupils come of his age and they all study there. 
So he started his studying and he was academically very good, very sharp brain in, in, in just, you know, a couple of months. He just uh, mastered all the academic books, all the religious books, and he was so quick. And then one day he observed as he was growing that every year in the Keturi village, there were a lot of pilgrims who used to pass by because they had to go and attend the Ratha Yatra. So see those days because of the mode of transport was such, people had to take breaks, take breaks, you know, break their journey and then start and then they take some rest. So they used to halt at different places. So usually during the Ratha Yatra time at Puri, lot of devotees, sadhus used to come to Keturi village and his father, being a very pious king, used to make all the arrangements for those pilgrims uh, to be comfortable, take prasad, have nice shelter, get refreshed before they continue their journey. So uh, during one of these uh, festival, festival-like uh, situation where the pilgrims have come in large numbers, uh, Narottam, uh, he decides to go and see what is going on in different tents, different colorful canopies, what is around. So, But then he's not allowed because he's a Rajkumar. So however, he convinces one of the guards that I will just walk with you and hold your hand. I'm not going anywhere. Just take me around. I want to see what's happening. So then one of the guards, they just took him around and, you know, and, and they thought this is safe, no harm. He's not doing anything. We're just showing him around. So this became a ritual. Every evening he was holding the hand of the guard, going around and seeing. And one such evening, he met a very special person called Krishna Das Pandit. Krishna Das Babaji is mentioned in some places. Now, Krishna das as Babaji, um, he's, he, uh, had, he made a rapport with Narottam and Narottam was asking, as a young boy, asking him different questions and Krishnadas Babaji Maharaj, he started telling him about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes because he had come from Navadvip and him, telling him so many beautiful pastimes. That way he got a little attached. So then one day his father called the guard and said, where does Narottam go every evening? So he said, sir, he just you know, moves around a little bit and he meets one sadhu called Krishnadas Pandit or Krishnadas Babaji. So Narutam's father said, he shouldn't be going out. Ask the Babaji to come to our palace and uh, I have no issue if my son is uh, uh, associating with some sadhu. It's my good fortune. So then they said, all right. So then they invited Krishnadas uh, Babaji, please come to the palace every day. So now this became a daily uh, ritual. He started coming every evening and spent some time with Narottam, tell him lots of stories, lots of pastimes of different associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And now slowly, Slowly and steadily, Narottam started getting so attached to Krishnadas Babaji that he used to finish up his homeworks and finish up his schoolwork so quickly because he used to wait that I want to know more because yesterday he said something about Rupa and he said something about Sanatana. What is he going to say today? So he was like so curious to know what is going to be today's, today's topic. So it, days passed on and he was hearing very sincerely, very carefully. Not only that, that whole place, Keturi, was a very pious place. And even his parents were so pious that every evening, round the year, they used to have Krishna Katha in the evening. All used to gather, hear Katha. So even as a young boy, when the king used to carry his son, you know, in the lap or just take him in the evening program, people used to get amazed seeing that how sincerely he used to sit and hear the Katha. Unlike the other children who would just maybe run around the Pandal, but he used to sincerely listen the Katha. So from beginning, he was very much interested to hear. Hear, he was a good listener. So now Krishnadas Babaji started telling him so many things. And one day, Krishnadas, as he was narrating some pastimes, um, Narottam said, I want to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then Krishnadas said, but he's no more. He's left this world. And when Narottam came to know that, he was shattered. He said, all along you told me so many pastimes and I thought I will meet him someday. And now you tell me that he's not there anymore. Oh, he was so heartbroken and he was crying. And Krishnadas Babaji had to tell him few more pastimes and somehow divert his mind and get him in control. He was profusely crying. Oh, I wanted to meet him. I thought someday I will see him. You never told me that he He's not there anymore. And then, you know, he said, okay, fine. Anyway, I will see Rupa. I'll see Sanatan. Now, what happened? Slowly, slowly, as he was going on hearing this kathas, 
they were so much in his mind that in his day to day conversations the katha used to come out so like once he was having prasadam with his father so his father was trying to you know he take some more take some more and then he said why are we eating so much father ragunath das goswami he just takes a little buttermilk he doesn't eat like this and then his father is laughing oh so you know so many things ah huh? oh no that's not for us to follow they are all worshipable but we cannot follow them you understand and then one day he says father why do we have to stay in this palace can't we just run away can't we just go to vrindavan so his father said but why he said no we should just run away what do you say we, but but you know what father we should not run away with our servants because if they bring gold coins then we will be in trouble just like sanatan goswami was in trouble so when he started speaking all this his father was like what is happening who's you, where are you learning all these things from so then his father very sweetly explains to him my dear son ragunath das goswami rupa goswami sanatan goswami they are all very worshipable they are all very pure devotees of the lord but we can't become like them we have our own duties we are we are the rulers here and we have to take care of this village so we cannot become like them you know we can just worship them and narottam das in his mind he thinks maybe you cannot become like him but some day i will become i will become like him and maybe i i can become like him and i will become like him this is what he thinks in his mind so now as the days are passing narayani wife of krishnananda mother of narottama expresses her fear to her husband i don't know i see lot of changes in our son he's not he's not normal child he's just talking so many things sometimes i just get worried can we do something about it and krishnananda is thinking he's a pious person and he's like if i stop uh, krishnadas baba ji uh, from coming to the palace it will be making an offense to the sadhu i can't say him no but you don't worry i'll counsel him i'll counsel our son he'll be all right don't worry he'll he'll be a good king he'll be nice i'll counsel him and this is what the conversation is going on now by this time narottam das thakur has already come to his teenage and now on one fortunate beautiful night nityananda prabhu comes in the dream of narottama and in the dream nityananda prabhu tells him hey narottam now it's enough your kheturi pastime is done chetra mahaprabhu's mission is waiting for you go and take bath in the padmavati river chetra mahaprabhu has kept krishna prem for you there so go and take the krishna prem take the gift that mahaprabhu has kept for you and join us and join us in vrindavan you know and join us in vrindavan you have lots of work to be done we need to make the we need to um, you know take the mission forward now when he wakes up it's past midnight and he's just thinking is it real i saw nityananda prabhu and he was so happy so now he decides okay this is the instruction given to me and i'll follow so now early morning in the brahma muhurta he just walks now everybody in the house is sleeping and he just walks to the padmavati river and then he dips inside the river and then lo and behold padmavati mother padmavati is there very much in par- personified she takes narottam in in her lap and then hands over krishna prem drowns narottam in krishna prem and narottam becomes so happy so ecstatic he sees chaitanya mahaprabhu in the form of a little boy entering inside his heart and then narottam becomes a mad man you know he shows all the ashta satvika vikar you know the crying and laughing and tears coming down and bodies trembling and stunned and he's just completely changed person and not only that narottam had dark complexion but because chaitanya mahaprabhu entered krishna prem entered he becomes golden colored completely different personality and now even today we can see that place in bangladesh that 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 that's exact place where narottam got krishna prem from padmavati river there's a very beautiful tree there a huge one and i think they also have a gaudiya math there who are uh, they have decorated the tree very nicely and uh, it's called premathali ghat where narottam got prema you know that is a ghat and there's a gaudiya math and they have this offerings they do uh, seven times in a day they offer prasad and seven times in a day they do uh, aarti you know that place is there so um now because narottam has got krishna prem he just 
he just puts his hand high in the air and he's he's dancing and, and singing like a madman. And early in the morning, when the village ladies come there for washing clothes and taking bath, they are like, "Is he not? Is he not Rajkumar, Krishnananda's son? Why is why is he acting like a madman?" So they immediately some of the ladies they run to the palace and inform your your son is here and he's just acting crazy. So then they all come there and then they escort him. They take him back home. But now when he enters the palace, his own mother and father are not able to recognize him because even the color of his skin has changed he's no more dark complexion and he's behaving in a very different way different symptoms and then um, they just ask him to take rest and in the evening his mother very lovingly you know putting hand on his head very lovingly says narutam and they used to call him naru she so said naru what happened to you my son why are you behaving like this so then naru he just puts the uh, head on his mother's lap and he cries he says mother what should I tell you? I saw this little boy, golden complexion. He entered my heart and now I am in his separation. I want to meet him. I want to join his service. I want to go to Vrindavan. I want to leave this place. Now his mother is completely heartbroken. What is this happen? Our son was completely normal till yesterday and now what is he talking? What to do? So now both the parents are worried. Now they are they are also devotees, so they understand what he is talking about. So then they um, they discuss among themselves that looks like our son may not stay for long. So let's guard him. Let's make sure that he doesn't escape or he doesn't just run away. And all this is temporary. After some time, he'll get better. You know, we we will we will we'll sort it out. Nothing to worry. So they just console each other and they immediately put a lot of guards. You know, a lot of security guards around him and make sure that he doesn't go anywhere. Now the days are passing, days are passing, you know, a few months passed and Narutam's condition is not improving. He simply keeps crying whole day, sometimes keeps crying whole night, doesn't eat anything, always chanting Krishna's name, always in separation of Chaitanya, Mahaprabhu. So now what to do, what to do, they're all wondering and he is also thinking that how long will I have to stay like this? They're all guarding me. There is no way I can escape. And he's just praying, Shri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu, Daya Karo More, you know. Toma Bina Ke Dayalu, please, please, please take me out from this condition. And then um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also comes in his dream and he says that just uh, join me in Vrindavan. Just come, come to Vrindavan. Somehow you come to Vrindavan. So now, fortunately for him, next day morning when he gets up, he gets a message from the Nawab and the Nawab is, uh, you know, has sent a message to Krishna Nanda that I have heard that your son has become divine. So I want to see him because I'm, I'm hearing a lot of gossip about him. So I'm sending palanquin and I'm sending all these soldiers and um, please send him. I just want to see him. Now, they were all working under this Muslim king. So they didn't have much choice. However, they were reluctant. But then they thought, that's all right. The Nawab is going to send all the guards. So my son will be safe. Just meet the Nawab and come back. So that's all right. So they send him. Of course, different commentaries and different books have different versions. In some places they say he simply walked out one night. He just touched the feet of his parents while they were in deep sleep and he just walked out. Whereas some places they say that the Nawab had sent a palanquin for him because Nawab wanted to see him. So now finally, He's very happy. At least I got some chance to come out of this place. Somehow I want to escape from this place. So now he's inside the palanquin and he's with all these guards and soldiers and they're on their way to meet the Nawab. Now, as they get inside, a little bit deep inside the forest, so what he does, Narottam, is he just says, I have to, you know, nature's call. So uh, some, some reason, some excuse he makes and somehow escapes from those uh, guards. Now these guards are also very sharp, so they just run behind him, somehow fine. Now this whole thing is like a Tom and Jerry, just going, you know, it's like a jungle maze. He's getting into this place, then they get in this place and he's just running around somehow trying to escape and finally they catch him. And they say, enough of playing, Rajkumar, let's go back home. This is not correct what you are doing. You know, your old father and mother will cry for you. Why are you doing this? Now Narutam is a very sweet boy. So he very sweetly explains, he said, just like a young 
girl if she has given her heart to a young boy now she can't give her heart to any other man she would long to be with him similarly once somebody has given their heart to the supreme personality of godhead now they long to be with him i long to be with my beloved lord i want to go to vrindavan please don't do this to me don't force me i don't want to come back there's no heart my heart is gone my heart has been stolen by the lord it's not with me now i need to go to vrindavan just please leave me alone little boy speaking all this so sweetly the guards got finally melted and they said all right you can go and not only that some of the guards even gave him some lakshmi or rajkumar how will you go okay take keep some money keep some money and go carefully and they all went back now he was on his own and he just ran and ran and ran he didn't want to stop in case the guards changed their mind he kept running and he kept running days together days together nothing to eat nothing to he has nothing and he's just and he and he was a prince so he was not used to such austerities barefooted just running and running and at one point he just collapsed he just collapsed and when he just collapsed you know what happens chaitanya mahaprabhu himself comes in a in a form of his of a of a little brahmana golden complexioned brahmana and comes and gives him a pot of milk now he was so famished he didn't even have the strength to hold the pot he just takes a pot and he sleeps and then he gets a divine vision in which rupa and sanatan come and then rupa and sanatan says hey narutam you know who is that little boy who came and gave you this pot that mahaprabhu himself has come and once you drink it all your fatigue all your tiredness will go away so then he just somehow gets up and then he sees the pot and, and just gulps it you know very carefully without even you know little bit uh, you know uh, here and there or, or just you know uh, without throwing anything down he's just so careful without dropping anything he just gulps it and yes he just becomes so fresh and again he regains all the strength and then he again starts running and running and running and then finally after two months he reaches mathura so when he is in mathura you know he just takes bath in the vishram ghat and then he is asking us uh, some some ladies are doing some work there or some of them so he just asked them that um what is this place have i reached vrindavan so they said uh, yeah you are in mathura just you know a little more and you'll be in vrindavan and the moment they said that that he is near vrindavan his heart starts beating so fast all the while he was running 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 now suddenly he becomes slow he's just thinking oh i came but am i even qualified to enter vrindavan i came but will they even accept me uh, i'm just a, i'm just a lowly person will they accept my service will they accept me in their group will rupa and sanatan bless me did i do right i don't know i i'm i shall i go how is this going on thinking and now he became so slow you know every step that he's taking towards vrindavan is very slow and very thoughtful now we see that you know when we are in when we are in awe of somebody um when the person actually comes in front of us it becomes very difficult you know like i've seen many times it happens to me when my guru maharaj is visiting by vishakhapatnam even the day before i'm all excited and i'm all active and making all the arrangements and everything and and you know you, oh come on let's go to the airport we should be on time this that and all but finally when finally when the time is that he's going to now come now the heart starts like okay do i okay so finally yeah so how you know what should i say or you know this happens right when we are in awe of somebody all the while we are very active all the while we are very confident but the person when actually the person comes in front of you you are a speechless you don't know what to say anymore so this is what is happening with narottam is like all the while he was like i have to go i want to go i must go and now that he is there in vrindavan is like so finally i'm going to see rupa and sanatan and all those people who i've been hearing about for days and months and years and then finally um, he meets a brahmachari there a, a, a sadhu there so when he sees narottam and he sees all this ecstatic symptoms and all and he's asking him that what's your name 
And then he says, I'm Narottam. And the moment he says, I'm Narottam, oh, this Brahmin Chari becomes so happy. He said, everybody is waiting for you here in Vrindavan. You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had long back said that you are going to come and everybody is waiting for you. We are so happy to see you. Hey, Narottam, you are here. I'm so fortunate that I could see you. I could see you. So yeah, please, please come. And then, they, they, you know, he takes him to his house, feeds him prashadam. Now, while feeding prashadam, by the way, he just mentions uh, that, well, um, Rupa and Sanatana are no more. They have already left this world. Now, Narottam is completely shattered. He's crying. He said, what is this? All these months I planned, I plotted, I dreamt, I hoped, I jumped, I walked miles together, enduring so many hardships just to meet them. And now you're telling me they are no more? Oh, what should I do with my life? I just want to give up my life. I don't want to live anymore. You know, well, how unfortunate I am. Neither I could see Mahaprabhu, neither I can see his followers. So as he's crying and crying, the the the, uh, the Brahmachari is like, hey, hold on. Not everybody has left. Raghunath Dos Goswami is still there. Jiva Goswami is still there. Lokanath Goswami is still there. Oh, there's so many people. Don't say like that. Don't be so heartbroken. Come on, collect yourself. Come, I'll take you around. I'll, 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 I'll um, give you, I'll take you for the darshan of all these exalted Vaishnavas. And they've all been eagerly waiting for you. So then he just gets composed again. And then they go to the uh, temple of Govinda Dev in Vrindavan. So now when he sees the deities of Govinda Dev, he's so happy. He's just dancing and the Pujari brings the Maha Garland of Govinda Dev and puts it around Narottam. And then Narottam is, you know, dancing in ecstasy and seeing the deities, he just falls down unconscious. Now while all this thing is happening, some of the devotees who now came to know that Narottam is here informs Jiva Goswami that Narottam has already come. So Jiva Goswami just comes running inside the Govinda Dev temple and he's asking everybody, where is Narottam? Where is Narottam? You know, where is he? And they say, here, here is, here is Narottam. And he becomes so happy. And then by the time Narottam gains consciousness and then Jiva Goswami just holds him tight to his heart and he says, Narottam, we've been waiting for you. We've been waiting for you. We're so happy that you have come finally. Oh, there's lots to do, lots to do. Come. First, you need to recover. You need to nourish yourself. See, what have you done to yourself? Because he was completely with all kind of bruises and tattered clothes and completely, you know, he was like two months of walking, you know, but hardly any food and shelter. So for some time now, Jiva Goswami feeds him nice prashadam, gives him some nice clothes to wear and he just gets recovered. So this is what happens. And now finally, Narutam Das Thakur is so happy that now he is among the uh, devotees and he's feeling so sheltered and so happy. Now he meets his future guru, Lokanath Goswami. So Lokanath Goswami uh, uh, takes prashadam with Narutam and then Jiva Goswami is asking Narutam, Narrate, narrate to Lokanath Goswami what happened. Tell him how you got Krishna Prem. Narutam is a little boy. I mean, he's still a teenager. So he's just narrating. This is what happened. And then I went to this Padmavati river. And this is how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. And all that he's narrating. And this is how I ran. And this is how I escaped. And I came. And Lokanath Goswami is just hearing all this and is so happy. So while taking Prashad. Now, Krishna Das Babaji had also told Narutam about Lokanath Goswami. So he was, uh, you know, in his mind thinking that, I want to take initiation from him. He is my guru. So he shares that with Lokanath Goswami. He says, please accept me as your disciple. Please give me shelter. And Lokanath Goswami, he just laughs it out. He said, oh, you don't need a guru. You have met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly. You have received Krishna Prem from Mahaprabhu directly. I don't think you need a guru. So, and then Narutam is insisting. And then Lokanath Goswami, he just waves it off. And they finish Prashadam and they go away. Now, Narottam is completely haunted by this one thought. I want Lokanath Goswami as my spiritual master. I need his shelter. He becomes very, very attached. So all the time he's just thinking, how should I go about it? What should I do? What will make him agree? But whereas Lokanath Goswami had taken a vow that he will never accept, any disciple. So now as he keeps thinking that, one day Jiva Goswami visits him. And Jiva Goswami is asking, Narottam, what is the uh, source of your sadness? And he says, Goswami, I want to take initiation from Lokanath Goswami, but he's not accepting. What should I do? Please help me. And then Jiva Goswami says, okay, 
I don't think he will accept, but you can try. Mm, serve him. Serve him. That's what he says. Serve him. And he leaves. Now he's contemplating. Okay, Jiva Goswami gave me some hint. He says, serve him. How do I serve him? Mr. Lokanath Goswami was one such devotee never mixes with anybody. He's, he's in his ekanta, you know, in, in, in the groves. He's in the kunja, all the time chanting, taking very little prasad, hardly meets anybody. How do you serve him? What way should I serve him? How should I serve my guru? He doesn't understand. So as he's contemplating, contemplating, one thing comes to his mind. Oh yes, I know how I can serve my guru. Lokanath Goswami goes to a particular place every day for passing stool, evacuating, right? The nature's call. So he thought, I'll clean that place. Where he passes, you know, you know, his daily uh, nature's call, I'll clean that place. So now he gets a broom and he just cleans that whole place and gets some nice uh, soft uh, mud and sand from the river bank, Yamuna. And then he puts that soft mud and makes it very neat and clean place. Now, next day morning when Lokanath Goswami comes there, he thinks, how come this place became so nice and neat and clean? What is happening? And that um, uh, uh, Narottam Das kept doing for months together. Every single day, hide inside the, you know, in the bushes and somehow crawl from those creepers and come to that clearing and clean that place of uh, where his, uh, you know, guru goes for the nature's uh, call. And then after a few months, Lokanath Goswami said, this is too much. I'm going to find out who's doing this. So one day he just hides inside those bushes and is waiting to see who is this person doing this service to me every single day. And then you see, and then uh, you see, because he used to do this in the in the early morning, even before the sun rises. So there is not much light. Now look, Anath Goswami is an old man. So now he hears, yeah, somebody has started cleaning that place. So he shouts, "Who is that? Who is there?" Who is that? Who is this doing? And then now he now he can't escape. So he says, oh, this is me, Guru Maharaj, this is me. And then Lokanath Mara Goswami, he gets very upset. He said, why are you doing this? You are a Raj Kumar. You are a prince. Is this correct, what you are doing? This is not correct. Do you think if you do this, I'm going to give you initiation? I'm not. Don't do this. Don't do this. And he gets very upset. And then um, Narottam just falls on his feet and he says, I've given my heart to you already. Now I can't take it back. You are my guru. Whether you accept me, you don't accept me. You are my guru. I've given you, I've given you my heart. And now, you know, after so many uh, requests by Narottam and his rendering of service and his sweet talks and his humble attitude and finally, uh, you know, Lokanath uh, Goswami accepts. Now, in some place I read that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes in his dream you now and Lokanath Goswami's dream and chastises him, accept Narottam, you know, don't do this, you know, give up your woe. That's what I read some, some other places. So finally, Lokanath Goswami says, okay, Narottam, I'll give you initiation. I'll accept you as my disciple, but you will be my only disciple, one and the only disciple. And he says, okay. So then, oh my God, it is like a big ceremony. Uh, you know, they arrange the Yagya Shala and Jiva Goswami. Swami, he does the Achaman and he does the fire sacrifice and Narottam goes and takes bath in the Yamuna, wears his new clothes, new set of clothes and then he sits in the initiation yagya and finally Lokanath Goswami initiates Narottam Das. And I thought that was so, so, so very uh, beautiful, so, uh, so humble and so sweet, uh, being a son of a king, doing such a service for his guru. So now life is beautiful. He's in Vrindavan, he got the guru he wanted as his shelter in association of Jiva Goswami because Lokanath Goswami had instructed him that you should learn the scriptures from Jiva Goswami. Now, we all know that Jiva Goswami had so much responsibility on his shoulder because after Rupa and Sanatan left, the whole thing was on his shoulders, renovating of the temple, completing of the temples which were undone, the legal aspects of uh, um, the Radha Damodar temple or the Radha Govindaji temple, uh, writing his own books, completing the other manuscripts, you know, uh, dealing with the Muslim kings and, and then keeping the whole Gaudiya um, uh, Acharyas and the whole the sampradaya alive and active and so many things was going on. But 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 Jiva Goswami made sure that 
it's not only that I do service, but I also train the next generation because they will have to carry forward this mission. So he started something called the Rupa Vidya Peet, where he was training the youngsters in, uh, from the books of Rupa and Sanatan about the Gaudiya tradition, about the Gaudiya Sampradaya. So uh, Lokanath Goswami asked him to go and enroll in that school. So now he enrolled into Jiva Goswami school. And there he met his friends who were going to be friends for his life. So he, he met Shyamananda. Uh, uh, who is also called Dukhi Krishna, and he met Srinivas Acharya. Of course, this Acharya and this um, Pandit and this Thakur, all these names were given to them by uh, Naro, by uh, Jiva Goswami. This Thakur name to Narottam is given by Jiva Goswami. This Acharya name to Srinivas and Pandit to Shamananda was given by Jiva Goswami. So Jiva Goswami became their Shiksha Guru. He was teaching them regularly uh, scriptures. And of course, um, later we know that Narottam Das Thakur was very affectionately called Thakur Mahashai. They used to address him as Thakur Mahashai. So now life was beautiful. I got his guru, was getting nice uh, scriptural education from Jiva Goswami. Not only that, he was also hearing Krishna's flute sometime. He saw Krishna sometime. And once it also happened that Radharani personally came. And Radharani told him that I'm so happy, Narottam, with your service. So I want to give you a seva of boiling milk. So like he, Radharani said that I meet Krishna every afternoon and the gopis, the manjuris, they prepare a very nice sweet for Krishna, a milk sweet. So uh, Champakalata, uh, she is very expert in boiling milk. So I'm uh, appointing you as an assistant to her. You should do the seva. And she just leaves. So now he shares this with his Guru Maharaj, Lokanath Goswami, this is what happened. Lokanath Goswami, of course, reveals to him that, yes, uh, Narottam, you are Vilasa Manjari, or you say, you are Champaka Manjari uh, uh, in, in Goloka, and that was your service there also. So Radharani has reinstated you in, in, in the service. So now uh, Narottam becomes very happy. So it, he's doing every day this Manasi Seva, where he's boiling the milk for making sweet for Krishna. Now, so many times it used to happen that while doing the Manasi Seva of uh, boiling the milk or, you know, in those days how they do it, you know, on the top of the, the dry wood, you know, they just lit it and they boil the milk. So uh, several occasions it happened that sometimes the milk is overflowing. So when it's overflowing, Narutam just goes and, and picks it up from his, with his bare hand and then gets his fingers burnt. And when he comes out from this Manasi Seva to, back to this world, and he still sees the fingers are burnt. And now he's feeling shy that somebody will see it. So he used to just cover them. But still everybody used to understand that, oh, again, Narutam has burnt his fingers today while boiling the milk. So like that, life was beautiful. Hearing Krishna's flute and uh, doing you know, personal Seva, having association of Guru. But now a, a, a different chapter started in Narottam's life. And that happened in one of the Karthik festivals. So uh, during one of the Karthik festivals, um, um, Jiva Goswami invited everybody, all the, um, all the different Goswamis and all of them who were living in different parts. And he called them all over and um, uh, it was a grand, grand Karthik festival. And everybody was wondering how come Jiva Goswami is making it so grand and inviting everybody. Something is there in his mind. And yeah, as predicted, in the middle of the festival, I know uh, Jiva Goswami makes an announcement. He said, I have decided to send uh, Narottam and Shamananda and Srinivas to Bengal. And they are going to carry the books written by all Goswamis, all of you, and by Rupa and Sanatan. And they will make copy of those books and they will spread Krishna consciousness in Bengal. Now all of them present there became so happy. Jai, Jai, you know, Jiva Goswami is is taking a lead, you know, a, a next chapter in, is starting in preaching. This is what we, we have to do now. We are all happy. There are so many books written, but they need to reach Bengal. Now, of course, there was an underlying um, reason behind it. Janava Mata had given a message to Jiva Goswami that things are not so right in Bengal because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left and, you know, people are getting diverted, confused and getting into different directions. You know, these books need to be brought back so that they're more clear about our philosophy, clarification, and they become uh, united again in preaching. So now uh, everybody was very happy, except for, of course, those three. Uh, they were like, 
it's like heartbreaking for them because they don't want to leave the association of all these exalted devotees and they don't want to go uh, to uh, Bengal. But then um, selfless service is a symptom of love. When you really love, then you want to serve. So now they thought, okay, we don't like it, but if this is what will please our guru, then we want to do it. So they were ready to do it. Of course, it it's so easy said than done because if you have to go out from your comfort zone, you know, you, they're comfortable, they're happy, relaxed, life is beautiful. But he has to, and see those days, traveling was not like the way we travel for preaching nowadays, uh, comfortable preaching. But it was really difficult going in bullock carts, sometimes days together, there will be no food to eat. And it is a, it is a, um, they don't know the unknown terrain, you know, there, there are no Google Maps. And there are no phones and there are no WhatsApps and, and then they're not even sure if they will ever come back and they will meet their guru or not because Lokanath Goswami was already very old, very old. So they don't know whether um, I can see my guru again or not. But you see, everybody in the parampara was an example to the to their successors because the same thing happened in Lokanath Goswami's life when he met Mahaprabhu in Navadvip. He didn't want to leave Mahaprabhu, but Mahaprabhu told him leave, go to Vrindavan, go to Vrindavan. So it was so, it was so heartbreaking for him. That why should I leave Mahaprabhu? When the Supreme Lord is in present in front of you, how do you leave him and go? But he did it. This is what is going to make Mahaprabhu happy. He did it. He left Mahaprabhu and he went to Vrindavan with Bhugarbha Goswami. Same thing we see in the life of Rupa and Sanatan. They didn't want to leave. But Mahaprabhu said, no, you have to preach. So they, they just left the association of Mahaprabhu and they were preaching in Vrindavan. We see the same thing happen in Jiva Goswami's life. When he met Nityananda uh, and Nityananda Prabhu took him on Navadvip Mandal Parikrama, he said, he asked Nityananda Prabhu, can I go and see Mahaprabhu in Puri? And Nityananda Prabhu said, no, you can't. Can't. Go to Prayag, take your education and then go to Vrindavan. A lot of things are to be done. But he never complained that I'll just see one time Mahaprabhu, you know. He never complained. He just left. And and then he could, and after that Mahaprabhu left this world. So Jiva Goswami could never have darshan of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we same we see the same thing in Srila Prabhupada's life. And you know, Srila Prabhupada's disciples also, they want to associate with him, but Prabhupada said, no, if you love me, then you just preach. It's not about staying with me, but doing something for me, something for carrying forward my Guru's mission. So this is what happened, and then they just agreed, and they all left. So now Jiva Goswami made all the arrangements, the books were put in the trunks, and the trunks were properly logged, everything was put on the bullock cart, and then the uh, cart started, there were some 10, 15 guards, and all three of them left, they took blessings from their Guru, and they all left. Now, of course, it's a it's a big story. Uh, I'll just cut it down. Of course, and then how the books get lost in one Vishnu, Ban Vishnupur. The king himself is, uh, you know, part of the decoit uh, team, and how they steal the books, and now they're all heartbroken. They don't know what to do. So Shrinivas Acharya says, "I'll stay back here and try to get the books. Meanwhile, you continue the journey." So now, without the books, um, uh, Shamananda Pandit and uh, uh, Narottam Das they go to Keturi. Now, when they reach Keturi, you know, of course, uh, coming the books part, later on the books are uh, uh, recovered. That's another story. But now here they go to Keturi. And then uh, in some books it's written that when he went to Keturi, his parents were present and they were very happy in receiving him. Uh, whereas in some places it is said that um, his parents had long, long gone. Uh, they were no more in this world. So, however, we'll stick to the uh, thing that his parents were there. So his parents were there and then uh, he took his took their blessings and they were so happy to see him after such a long time. And uh, after staying in Keturi for some time, um, uh, Shamananda Pandit, he left for Orissa. So now Srinivas Acharya was in Ban Bishnupur and uh, Shamananda Pandit was in Orissa and Narutam Das Thakur was in Keturi. But now there were no books to preach. So now he was like thinking, what should I do? How should I preach? He was all alone. He already started initiating um, uh, disciples and whatever way he could preach. So then, then, then he goes for a pilgrimage. He goes for a pilgrimage from Keturi. He goes to um, Navadvip, and there he associates with um, more uh, uh, followers and uh, associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Some of them were still there. Some of them had already left. So he goes to Ekachakra, to Nityananda Prabhu's birthplace, and then he goes to Jagannath Puri, and then of course. That's again a long story of how many different different miracles happen on the way and how when he reaches Puri, he actually sees the vision of Jagannath Rathyatra 
happening. And he sees Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is dancing with his associates and then he's just standing and watching the whole thing and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu calls him and just gives him a hug and tells him, Narottam, write songs, write bhajans and uh, through your music, through your music I will reach to people's heart. So that one instruction was there in Narottam's heart and he started composing uh, a very, very unique uh, style of music, which was very, very uncommon those days. Now, of course, we don't think very big thing about it, but those days, um, as writing in simple Bengali, you know, uh, and, and, and conveying the whole deep philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnavism in such simple uh, language was, uh, was very rare and very unique. It was very creative. And Narutam Das Thakur did that. And, and that way, through his bhajan, he opened the door of devotion for common man. It was so easily understood by everybody because it was simple Bengali language. So they could just memorize, they could repeat, they could imbibe in that. Uh, lives. So this instruction he got uh, from Mahaprabhu in Puri. And of course there is a pastime of how when he went to Navadvip he saw everybody is in sorrow. Some, uh, some devotee somewhere alone crying. Some devotee somewhere is fragile in health, not eating anything and just crying. Somebody is here sitting in grief. Somebody is there. Nobody is talking to each other. No more Haninam Sankirtan. No communication. All are simply crying. Everybody is in grief. They are in separation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So while he went to um, Khanai Narshala, he went to Katwa, he went to so many other places. He was just, all, he also went and met Janava Mata. Janva Mata at, at Kharda. So while he just went on this pilgrimage, he was just contemplating that what should I do to revive everybody's uh, enthusiasm again. People are, some of them are, our hearts are gone. Some of them have become diverted into some other thing. Somebody have become, you know, so, so many things have happened because now they don't have any association. And that's something that we can relate to during this COVID time. You know, suddenly, you know, for in the month of April, May, there was like no association of devotees. Completely everybody is locked inside. And many of them shared that you know, it, the only thing that could keep their devotion alive was this Zoom and internet. Otherwise, what way to connect to devotees, you know? And that could uh, keep their spiritual life, you know, some, somehow together because we are all so largely and heavily dependent on Vaishnava association. And if we don't have Vaishnava association, we just, you know, fall down. And uh, it, it's, it's so much like it's, a, it's, it's our food, you know, our, our life. It's a food of our spiritual uh, practices. So... Now there was no Sankirtan and, and of course uh, um, now Narutam was just thinking what should I do to again unite them, again uplift them, you know, get that spirit back. So as he was thinking, he conceived this very, very popular Keturi festival. So he decided that I will invite everybody and make a grand, grand Gaur Purnima festival. Now, now for some time, though Mahaprabhu was not there, they were not having something called Gaur Purnima. Or they were just in grief, in separation of Mahaprabhu. So they, they didn't have such grand program or something. So now on the day of Gaur Purnima, he decided that he will have this grand, grand festival where everybody will come and unite and, you know, again get enthusiastic to preach Krishna consciousness. So, of course... Um, Keturi festival by itself is a big class which I would don't want to go into now what grand grand preparations he had and of course the big help that he had was from his brother cousin brother because when Narottam did not become the king of Keturi then his father's um, younger brother Purushottam uh, Datta's son Santosh Datta uh, became the king and he also became the disciple of Narottam Das Thakur so now he was ready to give all the wealth uh, for this Keturi uh, festival so a very very grand festival was organized and I was just reading how they had they made a huge pond and they made a huge uh, flower garden and they made a huge residential complexes they made a huge ornate temple and they made so many facilities and they had big big storehouses for storing things for this uh, Keturi uh, Gaur Purnima festival and of course um, uh, there's another uh, pastime of how um, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes in the dream of Narottam on one certain night and says Narottam I've been waiting for you I'm in this one rice go down you know, for years together I've been waiting for you please come and take me out so next day morning he just asked everybody, is there any big rice go down here or some rich man who has 
many, many, many rice go down. So they said, yeah, we know this man and they take him there. And then he asked, oh, so you have this rice go down. Can I go and have a look? And this man is like, hey, Narottam, don't do that. My rice go down is infested with snakes. So we never go there. For years together, nobody has gone there. So you don't go. And he says, but where are they? And he says, oh, yeah, here, here they are. And, he's, and, and without even talking to anybody, he just starts entering inside. And everybody's like, Narottam, don't do that. What are you doing? He just enters inside the go down and starts digging and looking here and there and finally he comes out with a beautiful deity of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Vishnu Priya completely decked up with jewels and clothes and he just comes out there and he says here and everybody's like Jai oh so now the Narutam Das is more all the more glorified and they become so happy but in the dream he was asked to install another five sets of deities. So now he wants to install this deity on the Gaur Punima day, uh, along with uh, Vraja Mohan deities and Radha Raman and Radha Kanta and uh, Radha Krishna and uh, Vallabhi Kanta. You know? So like that, um, many, many five set, different sets of deities are to be installed. So now he's very happy. A beautiful invitation has been sent to everybody in Sanskrit nice poetry and you know please come and the invitation is for everybody for different Goswamis from Vrindavan for different people in Navadvip so now even Jahanava Mata comes there for, with Virabhadra from Kharda and Advaita Acharya's sons come from Shantipur and and um, uh, Raghunandan Thakur comes from Sri Khanda and devotees come from Khatwa and devotees come from Navadvip and it's so like that everybody you know uh, comes for and, and Shamananda Pandit comes for this and Srinivas Acharya comes for this festival and, and many, many kings and queens come for this festival and many big poets come and many erudite scholars come and many um, singers come and oh, so many people, they come for this grand, grand festival. And then finally, the day of the festival arrives and the deities are installed and the grand, grand festival. And that was the first time Narottam Das introduced his unique singing, his unique composition, his unique music. And when Narottam Das Thakur starts singing, everybody there is in ecstasy. Everybody's dancing and dancing and singing on the top of their voice. And lo and behold, what do they see? Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself comes there with all his associates and now everybody's gone crazy. So now Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, dancing and Nityananda Prabhu is holding Narottam's hand and, and, and dancing and Gadadhar Pandit is holding Shamananda's hand and, and, and dancing and, and Srinivas Acharya's, uh, Advaita Acharya is holding Srinivas uh, Acharya and dancing and Everybody is just dancing and there is Rupa Goswami and then there is Sanatan Goswami and then there is Haridas Thakur and then everybody, everybody, all the associates, there is Srivas Thakur there and like that. So they, everybody is there and they are visible to everybody. Everybody can see them and all of them are dancing and dancing and dancing. And then finally... After some time, the kirtan dies down and then they all disappear. Now when they all disappear, everybody's again into grief, they're crying. And, and for the first time, uh, many of the new people also, maybe simply new in Krishna consciousness, they just attended the Keturi festival, even they are able to taste that vipralamba bhava, or what it is to be in separation of the Lord, because they saw the Lord and now they got separated, so it's no more into the books, they're actually able to experience that, so now they're so happy, everybody's one way very happy that they saw the Lord, but one way they're again in separation, and, and then uh, Jahanava Mata, um, to try and divert everybody's attention, she says, okay, now the installation is done now we'll have a special festival which is called the fagu festival so where you know you just throw colors on each other so then they bring buckets and buckets of colors and put them on the deities and then put them among on each other and then this whole beautiful festival and that is how the evening ends and the next day morning again Jahanava Mata personally cooks for everybody and then of course the Keturi festival goes on and on it's a huge festival which goes on for maybe a few days together and then finally everybody goes back uh, to their respective places. So this Keturi festival is a very important contribution of Narottam Das Thakur because that united that united the whole Gaudiya Sampradaya, that united everybody and they and they were again renewed with energy to uh, preach Krishna consciousness. So that's one uh, very, very beautiful thing, a uh, very, very important contribution of Narutam Das Thakur. And of course, there's so many other pastimes, but um, time is the constraint. I don't want to go over time. Um, <clears throat> I just want to end it with his uh, departing pastimes. 
but uh, one very, very um, a humorous pastime is about uh, how he makes Narottam Das Thakur, how he makes this uh, Hari Ram and Ramakrishna, how he makes them devotees. Uh, they were just sons of some Brahmana who is to sacrifice goats for Devi Puja. And how one day they just come there for taking some goats, uh, for taking them for sacrifice and how Narottam and Ramachandra Kaviraj. Oh, I should talk about Ramachandra Kaviraj because when we talk about Narottam Das Thakur, if we don't talk about Ramachandra Kaviraj, it's, it's not complete. Ramachandra Kaviraj was a um, disciple of uh, Srinivas Acharya, but he was very close friend of uh, Narottam. So they both were just walking on the bank of Padmavati and then they see these two Brahmin boys who were trying to get some goats for slaughter for this Devi Puja and there's a whole humorous story of how they, you know, they are brainwashed and how they, bec they, they don't go back home. They just take initiation from um, Narottam Das and they take initiation from uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj and they become um, devotees and when they go back home, their father is shocked to see them shaven head with Tulsi Mala and then how their father is trying his best, you know, to convince them and then he calls different um, uh, different pundits to, to, to defeat their children and convince them that uh, Brahmanas are more, um, uh, more what do you say, high class or, or Brahmanas are more respected uh, than Vaishnavas and you know, he actually, he chastises his children that we are Brahmanas and how come you took initiation from a Kaista, you know, from, from Narottam, he's just a son of a Kaista, I know, I know his father very well and why did you do that, you know, it's, it's just uh, chastises them. So uh, this is another very interesting pastime and how their children become overnight scholars and they start defeating everybody and his father is surprised, that where did they get all this knowledge from? And then of course, um, there is this pastime of how um, Chand Rai, there is a pastime of how Chand Rai and Raghavendra Rai, how they become devotees. They were, Chand Rai was just, a, he was like a decoit, you know, like a roadside decoit. And how he was, um, he was, uh, he was uh, taken up by some ghost, you know, and then how Narutam Das Thakur helps him uh, to come out from that. And then, um, oh, like that, there's so many beautiful pastimes uh, of how he, Narutam Das Thakur was such, such a compassionate preacher, such a, such an expert preacher. He made everybody, right from the Brahmana scholars to decoits to just about everybody, he made them um, a pure devotees. And then there's a pastime of how he made Ganga Narayan Chakravarti. He was one of the very, very reputed uh, uh, Brahmin scholar and how he also surrenders to uh, Narottam Das Thakur. And then, um, and then the final pastime, the Keturi uh, temple becomes very famous. A lot of people are coming. Now Narottam Das Thakur is very famous. So Narottam Das Thakur finally decides that, oh, it's becoming too crowded. I just need some separate space for my bhajan. So then a little bit far away from Keturi, he has his own bhajan thali, and there he resides with Ramachandra Kaviraj. And they both are very happy, uh, you know, sharing Krishna Katha and living in peace. But one day, a letter ar arrives from Srinivas Acharya asking his disciple to join him back because he wanted to go to Vrindavan and he wanted his disciple uh, to be his assistant. So he asked him to come back. And now Narottam is, you know, he's in grief because he doesn't want to leave Ramachandra's uh, company. But then what can be done? Ramachandra has instruction from his spiritual master, so Ramachandra just leaves him. And when Ramachandra leaves, now Narottam is, uh, he doesn't want to live anymore. He just wants to give up his body because the only thing that was keeping him alive was the association of Ramachandra Kaviraj. And now his disciples, uh, Ganga Nara and Chakravarti, and they understand that looks like Guru Maharaj may, you know, is trying to leave his body. So they're just trying to divert his attention. So one day Ganganar and Chakravarti comes and tells him, uh, Guru Maharaj, why don't you come to my house? You, you know, you're not eating anything. How your body is becoming, you know, why don't you come to Gambhila and you can take bath every day in Ganga and we can make some nice prasadam for you. You'll have a change of your mind and change of the scenery. So uh, everybody thought he's not going to accept because he's always in separation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and crying. But he said, yeah, why not? Let's go. I'm coming. So everybody became very happy. Oh, looks like then Guru Maharaj is, okay, Guru Maharaj is going to come back to normal. He's going to take prasadam now. He's going to become normal. So they're all very happy. They all decide, they all gather together and they all go to Gambhila. And now they reach Gambhila and then uh, uh, Narottam Das Thakur says, okay, come on. So now I want to take bath. So then Narottam Das Thakur goes and takes bath in the Ganga. And then he comes out from the Ganga and he's lying down on the bank. And then suddenly he's just lying there lifeless. 
And now the devotees understand, oh, so he wanted to leave his body. That is why he came here. And now they're all crying and crying. Oh, please come back. What are you doing? And, and he, you know, he's just hardly breathing. And for days together, for three to four days, he just lies there and just lies there without any motion. And now Ganga Narayan Chakravarti is like, Oh, I'm so useless. I did this. He was okay in his bhajan study. I called him here and now see, he's going to leave his body. And as he's crying, few brahmanas, <clears throat> few brahmanas of that area, the Gambhila, Smartha, Pandit, they're all mocking at Ganga Narayan. You and your guru, your guru is a kaista, not even a brahman, and you people take initiation from him, and now he's dying, and you people do keep on doing that harinam, what is all this? And they're just mocking and laughing at him. And now Ganga Narayan, he feels so bad. He runs back, and he holds Narutam Das Thakur's feet and says, Guru Maharaj, we require you. We need your shelter. Please, we need your guidance. Don't go away just now. If you go away, people like these, these pandits, they will make mockery. They will make mockery. They will preach. All our all our mission, you know, will be stopped. We need your guidance. We are not yet, you know, on. We can't stand on our own. We need your help. Please don't go away at this moment. So, now there is no life. And all the other disciples who have surrounded him, they already, you know, said that there is no pulse. There is no life. And and still Ganga uh, Narayan Chakravarti is crying and crying. And then what they see suddenly. There's, a, there's an effulgence, you know, coming out from the body. And then they see what appears is a golden Brahmin thread on the body of Narutam Das Thakur, you know, showing the whole world that he's a real Brahmin. And when the Smartha Pandits, they see this, they get like, oh, and they are immediately, they fall on the feet of Narutam Das Thakur. And then Narutam Das Thakur just gets up, walks, you know, takes bath in Ganga and goes back. And goes back to Kheturi. And now all these Gambhila Pandit, they all gather and they talk among themselves that this is what we saw. Narutam is a real Vaishnava. Let us all take shelter from him. So they all go to Kheturi. They take shelter of Narutam Das Thakur. They all become his disciples. And now it's like the peak of his preaching. Every single person is only talking about Narutam, Narutam, Narutam. All are becoming devotees. And now after a few days, again Narutam Das Thakur calls his disciples says, let's go to Gambhila. I want to take Ganga Snan. And this time his, uh, his favorite disciple Ganga Narayan says, no, no, Guru Maharaj, it is okay. We can take bath here only. No, no, I want to go to Ganga. Now they understand. Looks like Guru Maharaj wants to leave, but they can't say anything to him. So finally they go there. And now they're all crying as he's entering Ganga. They know something is going to happen. So now Narutam Das Thakur is in a very good mood and he says, why don't you massage me? You know, massage me. So this uh, Ramakrishna, he comes on one side and uh, Ganga Narayan comes on one side and they start massaging his body. Now what they see, as they are massaging his body, his body is melting. His body is melting and becoming a white liquid and mixing in Ganga. So now they're able to understand what is happening. Guru Maharaj is leaving, but they can't do anything about it. They can't just take him and put him, you know, they can't do anything. They're just, they're just watching it happen. And then only thing that they could do is they just took a clay pot and collected all that white liquid for his samadhi. And this is how Narottam Das Thakur uh, leaves his body in a very, very glorious way. So like that, you know, so many, I mean, we can keep hearing and hearing the unlimited pastimes of how Narutam Das Thakur was, was a person Bhagavata, not only preaching, talking, changing lives of thousands and thousands of people. And um, when the more we hear about uh, these Acharyas, the more we feel, okay, I mean, we are connected to such a glorious Sampradaya via Srila Prabhupada, these are, uh, these are our ancestors, you know, and we are connected to, the, uh, to them. And we feel so sheltered and so um, inspired and we feel so grateful, so grateful what they have done for us. We can't repay to them. And of course, the more we hear, the more grateful that we become. Our heart becomes a fertile land where the uh, uh, where bhakti can sprout, where love for Krishna can uh, sprout. So with this, I end it here. I'm very sorry to go o over time, but um, I, I don't know if justice can be done to this topic because it's so huge. And there's just so many things to uh, to talk about uh, uh, Narottam Das uh, Thakur. 
So like this, Narutan Das Thakur, he uh, leaves his body and then, of course, um, his parampara and his teachings are still continued. His, his grand Gaur Purima festival, Srila Prabhupada kept it alive and active and we still have such grand, grand, grand Gaur Purima festival happening every year. And uh, on this occasion of his divine appearance day, I pray from the core of my heart that all of us um, get the mercy of uh, Narottam Das uh, Thakur and uh, we can become good devotees and uh, some way or the other, in whatever small way, if we can also assist uh, the mission of um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in whatever little uh, way, I'm sure we are all part of this big machine, you know, sometimes a big machine has small parts, small screw somewhere, small nails, but every screw is doing their own part in the in the bigger uh, machine. And we are all like those small, you know, whatever our ability, capability, uh, um, Das mercy, by the mercy of the acharyas, if we can be engaged and, uh, you know, uh, somehow serve uh, Guru and Krishna <clears throat> in a way that uh, pleases them. Thank you so much. Narutam Das Thakur Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. <coughs> Okay, so your question is that. Okay, one second. So your question is that Narottam Das Thakur was blessed because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had kept the Krishna Prem for him. So what about us? Yeah, but Krishna Prem has also been kept for us also by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and he has blessed us also. Otherwise, how did Srila Prabhupada come into our lives? So the fact that Srila Prabhupada has come to our lives, the fact that we got an opportunity to read Srila Prabhupada books, the fact that we all have kantis in our, our, our neck and tilak on our head and we are chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra and we are connected to this glorious ISKCON movement and Gaudiya Sampradaya itself shows that we are all blessed. We are all blessed. Otherwise, how? Out of millions and millions of people are out there and it's we who got this uh, opportunity to get connected to this glorious sampraday. So yes, we are all empowered and we are all um, got the gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he has put that in his holy name and um, by, by rendering service uh, to Guru and Krishna, uh, we all get that gift uh, by uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So uh, nothing to worry, it's not about um, only Narottam Das Thakur, but it's only thing is, it's only thing is, Everybody does according to one's capacity. So it's not that, you know, like your question may be, so can we also become, glow, one day do something like now that we are already doing. It's that a, a, a elephant, uh, can walk and a fish can swim. You can't gauge the uh, capacity of elephant by the way he swims or you can't gauge the capacity of fish by the way the fish can climb the tree because fish is supposed to swim and uh, elephant is supposed to walk and birds fly, so like that. So yeah, we have our own individual uh, capacities and we've all been blessed and um, we should have uh, full faith and uh, with sincere efforts, if we do our sadhana properly and, uh, and uh, you know, have that faith and uh, work in that direction, we are also empowered and we will do whatever we are, we are uh, supposed to do because everything in our lives are also orchestrated by Lord and we all have a role to play. We all have a role to play in this um, mission, all of us. You know, that is why I know this one personal... Um, you know, pastime of Prabhupada, I like a lot in this regard. I just share with you in a minute. Um, um, <clears throat> one place, Srila Prabhupada was on a morning walk and uh, he saw some wild uh, weed growing somewhere and with a cane he pointed out and he said, what is this for? And, and Tamil Krishna Maharaj said, this is useless. And Srila Prabhupada immediately said, you are useless. And people around were surprised because Tamil Krishna Maharaj is like, one of the favorite disciples of Prabhupada and Prabhupada chastising him in front of everybody like this, you are useless. And then Prabhupada said, nothing is useless in Krishna's creation. Everything has some or the other use, you know, you can't say this is useless. And, and we, we see that, you know, uh, there were days, uh, you know, a um, few decades ago, nobody even knew what is aloe vera. They always thought it's some kind of a cactus. But now with uh, Ramdev Baba and Patanjali and uh, people are going 
gaga everywhere about aloe vera and its benefits. So some useless cactus, but we know it's not useless now. We know that everything, every herb, every plant has some or the other, uh, you know, role to play. So personally, I like this example so much because I just keep this thing in my mind and I, I feel that, yes, we are not useless. We're not useless. We also have some role to play in Srila Prabhupada's uh, mission. Definitely. We, we may not be Narottam Das Thakur, but, but whatever. We, we may be that cactus, but we're not completely useless. Everybody of us has some role and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has thought about all of our roles in some or the other way, small or big. And we have a part to play in this. So, yeah, so we should just, that is why we are reading this, uh, this glories of different acharyas so that we understand what's, how glorious, <clears throat> how glorious are our ancestors. And that makes us feel so confident and, and proud. And yes, we can, you know, we see our, our past acharyas and we, we, we are connected to that glorious sampradaya. So we are all empowered and we all can do, um, you know, so it's not, you don't have to wait for any dream or vision from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or any golden pot with Krishna Prem, we already have it. <clears throat> we already got it uh, from Srila Prabhupada's MRC. We just need to work on it. it we, just, we just need to work on it. It's, we need to work on it and develop it and nourish it further. The seed is there. We just have to put water and, and nourish it. And it will grow. Someday it will grow. <clears throat> I just hope this helps you, Mataji. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> okay. So your your question is your question is that do devotees follow astrological charts? Do they follow Vastu Shastra? Is it correct or not? Now, since you mentioned about this pastime from Narottam Das Thakur's life, we can't compare with their uh, situations because even though astrologers or those who were watching palmist or horoscope makers, they were all genuine. And that was their uh, profession and uh, they were also devotees of the Lord. But uh, why we don't do it now is because uh, the hardly, you know, uh, such genuine people are still available. It has become more like a money-making thing and sometimes they do misguide. Now, coming to that karma kanda part which you said, no, it's like this. I was reading somewhere that Prabhupada, that one place where I said that I don't mind if they are worshipping uh, Ganesha, now please don't quote me, I'm just, don't quote me anyway. He said, I don't mind, but the problem is, like some devotee asked that before going for book distribution, can I just, you know, Vigna Vinashak, you know, Ganpati. So Prabhupada said, the problem is after some time you will stop worshipping Krishna and you will only worship Ganesha. That is the problem. Now see, the problem is there is nothing wrong. You can consult a Vastu Shastri or you consult a person with horoscope, but the problem is then we will we'll forget about other things and we'll start uh, concentrating and focusing on this only. So now we'll forget the whole the Krishna conscious aspects of it and we are will be more concerned about Vastu, you know. So the whole point is these can be additional or this can be helpful, but they should be like side dish. The whole point is uh, um, Krishna conscious process. You know, why I'm saying this is, let me just give you one practical example. Let's say um, you, you want to buy a house, which is very, you got something which is very close to the temple. So now you can go to Mangalarti, you can participate in the program, but it's not Vastu, uh, it's not, uh, you know, it's not Vastu correct house. So now you will say, because it's not matching with the Vastu, I'll go and get some house which is very far from temple but that is that is vastu oriented so now now these kind of situations you know you give priority to that which is helping in our krishna conscious life so that is why devotees they avoid all these things because we get so much engrossed into that that we compromise our main goal uh, for these small little things now they can they can be used as a support or help but they should not be used independently then we'll become a karma kandis and then again all said and done we chant Hare Krishna, uh, everything is covered into that. We don't need to do separately anything, you know. Even the demons understand that. We see in Bali Maharaj Leela how Shukracharya at the end is telling uh, Krishna, uh, telling uh, Vamandev, where your name is chanted, everything is uh, auspicious. Everything is complete. Nothing is incomplete, my Lord, wherever your name is chanted. So when Lord's name is chanted, even the house which is not Vastu complaint also uh, will become a Vastu complaint because where Krishna's name is chanted. And even if some house may be perfect Vastu, but there is no Krishna's name chanted, then it's like a place for the crows to stay. So like that. So that's the whole point. Only thing is, 
because our human brain is so limited and if we keep on adding so many things in our life we'll get diverted unnecessary that's why we just keeping one single focus and one single principle in life always remember krishna never forget krishna associate with devotees take prashad and we just want to keep it simple keep it simple because these things will complicate it but then if we are matured enough and we know how much to take and all we can always consult see these are they don't um, these are helpful vastu what does a vastu shastra it will just uh, um, tell you what, where the doors and what should be placed in such a way that proper energies flow but of course we have this source of super energy you know hari hari naam you know, hari naam and hari krishna maha mantra so we are not bothered about this different energies but then they are helpful they don't cause any harm but we don't compromise on other things based on this things that we how much importance should be given to what that much only it should be given nothing more than that otherwise it will cause an imbalance there should be proper balance maintained if we can do that you know it's enough i can elaborate on this but then i want to take some more questions if there are some other different questions Okay now did you okay let, let me see if i got the question right you said that i was saying that uh narottam das thakur at one point said that it's becoming too busy in kethuri lots of people visiting the temple so he wanted some secluded place where he can do his bhajan so how do we understand that and is it okay for a devotee uh, to go to some secluded place and do bhajan did i get the question right okay all right now again uh, uh, we we don't imitate uh, the, the great vaishnava acharyas we simply follow what they said but we don't try to imitate what they did because um, for narottam das thakur and ramchandra kaviraj maybe they don't need association of uh, you know uh, devotees uh, they are themselves you know um, drowned in krishna prem but when it comes to us we definitely need a vaishnava association and if we try to just stay alone and do some ekanta bhakti we are not sure what will happen to us the proof is the covid situation when many of the devotees uh, felt that it was a little difficult to do bhakti in ekanta they really were hankering for um, association of devotees and again um, even if we uh, talk about this narottam das thakur also was not alone again having said that he was not alone there also he was taking the association of uh, ramachandra kaviraj and then we hear that when ram when narottam das thakur uh, uh, came to know he got the news that ramachandra kaviraj had left this world uh, he was completely shattered and he wanted to give up his uh, body and then we all, we also see in, in bhajans of narottam das thakur many places he says ramachandra sanga mange narottam das he's asking for devotee association so at every stage of life when where one when is neophyte or one is advanced or one is still in the journey i guess every stage of life one needs association of uh, devotees so even though narottam das thakur was was wanted to stay away from crowd but he didn't want to leave devotee association in fact many places in the prema vilas and uh, and in uh, uh, and in narottam vilas you can read that how even when they were little far from kheturi ganga narayan chakruti used to sometimes carry prasadam for them see the the whole point why why narottam das wanted to stay away is kheturi became so famous it became like a pilgrimage place or rather a tourist destination something like that so thousands and thousands of people are coming regularly for darshan so when they come for darshan then they want to see him they want to do pranam so the whole point is he didn't want to take materialistic association it's not that he wanted to run away from devotee association devotee association one one still the fag end of their life nobody wants to leave what he was trying to do is so many neophyte people come and then and at one place he mentions he said now my disciples are well qualified and they can take over they can take care of the service so he just wanted to maybe have a smooth transition where if he stays a little away then his disciples learn to make the day to day decisions on their own manage the temple is just like preparing them for his uh, departure which will happen he just wants to train them how they can live in his separation at the same time follow his instructions and carry forward the mission so it's like a he's just preparing them mentally prepare 
preparing them physically, preparing them, you know, by giving that uh, situation. But at no point of time we see that he was trying to stay away from devotee association. So he was always there. He was constantly, and even though he was there, devotees used to often come and visit him. But he was selective. He was selective about whom to associate with. So at one point in bhakti, he was completely available for everybody. And then when he had his people doing the job, then he took a little step back, training them. And then he was taking more... Um, higher association or selected association where he's taking association of uh, uh, Ramachandra Kaviraj but then we see in his bhajans also he says he's hank hankering for association so yeah devotee so, so there is no apparent controversy here everybody needs devotee association and devotee association is the only way and especially in Kali Yuga, we see in Bhakti Vinod Thakur also says, Ekaki Amar Nehi Paival, Hari Nama Sankirtan. In Kali Yuga, Sange Bala, Sange, the Sange Shakti, the whole thing, the whole strength in our Krishna consciousness comes by our association only. The more we have association of uh, devotees who nourish us, um, we can somehow survive in our uh, spiritual journey. We very much need this association. So there is, there is no controversy. There is no point where we need... Uh, um, Ekanta. And again, what he was doing there, there also he was associating by Ramchand and, and associating through books, associating through books, associating, uh, reading more scriptures, discussing, taking prasad. So, so that, that's what I'm, um, that's what I mean to say that, yeah, association. So it's not that he was running away from association, maybe. See, also there is so many things to it. It's like, you know, if he's there, there is management of the temple, the people coming to visit. So all this, maybe he, he want to take a back seat from management day-to-day -day management, but it doesn't want to take back seat from association of devotees. Of course, again, having said that, we can't compare with them or we can't compare with Lokanath Goswami who was sitting inside the, uh, the bushes and uh, he was not associating much. We can't compare with them because wherever they are, they're carrying Krishna in their heart. If we sit inside those bushes in Vrindavan, we'll start thinking about this butterfly, that butterfly. What happened with Maharaj Bharat, you know? He got at attached to a deer, you know? He was trying to do it in a secluded place and he ultimately got attached to a deer. So if we try to do that, we'll start getting attached to the ants in our room and the butterfly and the lizard and the cockroach. And no matter what, our mind may just take us everywhere, roundabout tour and come back. Only when we are in devotee association, we are alert, you know? Uh, that's my um, that's my humble opinion, Prabhu. Hi, Krishna. Thank you very much. Vancha kalpata rubhaya sakripa sindhu vevaja patita anam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha. Sab Krishna, Krishna.